Hi, this is Ginger Cook, and I want to welcome you to a fun new Impressionistic style painting. Remember, the Impressionists had one common thing. They were using oil paint, and it didn't dry. And when they would go out on a landscape and paint, and they would go outside, they had to do little tiny dots of paint, and then kind of overlap them in order for them to complete a painting without waiting months in between for the drawing time. That was one of the tr things that they did, and it was a very different style of painting. A lot of contrast between warm and cool colors, like uh, reds and blues and so forth. And I really enjoy spring. This is the time of year when we see a lot of the trees starting to bloom. March is, is one of those months where in certain places of the country, like myself in Houston, we're going to start seeing apple trees a blossom. And so I thought this might be a fun one to do, so I want to invite you to follow along with me, and we're going to go enjoy painting this. I always film the introduction last, and so I told you if I made any additional comments to this, or, you know, brush strokes, I did add a little tiny thin line here, see if I can show you, where there might have been a fence between these, and added a few more highlights on the tree and on my fence posts. But those are probably the main things that I did as far as, you know, when I sat and looked at the painting. Sometimes it's nice to just let your painting rest for a while, then come back and look at it and see if there's something else you want to do. So feel free to come on back to this painting when you're finished, just this first introduction video, and just sit here and pause the video and kind of look at this, back it up just a little bit, and see if you can see any of the things I might have done that would have been different. One of the things I like to do, and when I'm all finished, is just sign my name. This is a uniball pen, and I'm just going to show you. Everything's dry now, so I'm just going to take right here like this. I'm going to write the like cook right here, and I'm going to go ahead and sign my sign my name right there. Very small. This this doesn't require any shaking of the pen or anything like that. It's quite marvelous. And then the last thing I do when I sign my name is take a little piece of a red paint, little tiny bit like that, and just very gently cross it with a little brush like this. There we go, a little red slash across my name, and you'll have to look that up sometime on the gingercookstudios.com under uh, my bio to ask see why I absolutely sign my name like that. That's sort of a you know sort of a fun fun story. So I want you to enjoy this video. I look forward to seeing what you paint and I'm always here to help. Remember there's it's all about the direction of brush strokes. This is what this video is about. We're using half inch and quarter inch brushes for this. Just a, our normal palette and these half inch and quarter inch uh, Simply Simmons brushes was a quarter inch and a half inch one. So the majority of the painting was done with these two brushes. So I think this is going to be a lot of fun and interested to see how you guys like it. And let's paint our, you know, pond with the apple trees. Pond, I think that's what we'll call it. I don't know, I haven't decided yet, but I'm going to call it something. Something with apple blossoms, I think. All right, might be fun, apple blossoms. So there we go. And I will look forward to seeing your artwork. Okay, so the colors that we want to use today for this Impressionistic painting are pretty much the ones we use all the time. White, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, cad red medium, yellow oxide, cad yellow medium, and burnt umber. Those are our colors. Might add some purple later, haven't decided. But as you know, I always film the, uh, inter uh, the introduction to the video is always filmed last, so if I add another color, I'll mention it in the introduction. How's that? Does that sound pretty good? All right, now what we have to do first is just get an underpainting going here, and I think the color that I want is blue, and I want a kind of a light blue color. So I'm going to just take phthalo blue and white like this, tiny bit of like 2% cad red medium, maybe a little more white. You notice how I put a log in this scrape, okay? I guess I'll just put this on here like this and then just paint all this in with a large brush. What do I got? Just something like this. I'm just going to use a ruby satin silver, but you know, any bright, just squared off brush. And this is like a number eight, I think. 
I wet the brush and then I'm going to come along here like this and just go ahead and paint this entire canvas this sort of turquoise blue color that's what I want that's going to be our underpainting and then we're going to dry this very well with the hairdryer and remember to hold your hairdryer very close to the picture when you do this and uh, put it on high high heat and make sure that it's nice and dry and then give it a blast of cold air to keep going with it see that was just pretty much all I needed right there was just this little bit bit we mix and you can see how this is covering up pretty well I might scrape up some of this and move it down here like that because I put quite a bit up here and I just want to have a nice dry coat of this paint and please notice that, that we're not doing any water after I put a little water on the brush to kind of wake the brush up but that was it I might come up here and grab a little bit more of this but that is exactly how I'm going to cover this and that little bit of paint covered this whole little 8 by 10 canvas okay so now we're going to dry that all right we've dried it now we're going to take a piece of chalk and we're going to sketch in our picture we want to go about three and a half inches down from the bottom a couple of places here like this just make it a little dot like that and I want to say that I have a little roof of my barn here like this I'm trying to decide. I think that's a little bit low than I, lower than I wanted. I want to come up just a little bit. Oh, it was a little low. Like just here's three and a half. Let's go three and a quarter. I like that better. Three and a quarter. You know, sometimes I'll view it on the canvas and see what it looks like. And sometimes just coming up just the slightest little bit makes a difference. And here's our the roof of our our barn, and it's about oh an inch and a half. I'm going to say that there's our a barn here. And remember, it's just a little A-frame here coming down about, oh, I don't know, maybe this far from the bottom of the canvas. How far is that? About to, oh, two inches. And you're not going to really see this side of the barn because of our tree. Our tree is going right here next to the barn, so you're not going to see this part. We'll put it in. Here's what will be. And then up about here, I'm going to say that I've got a little bit of a, where our lake is going to be, kind of kind of gets short it doesn't go clear here like that and then we're going to say we've got some a bank it's coming back here and some bushes that are kind of behind our barn like this okay so that basically I can kind of give you the measurements on that the lake is about an inch and a half up and about this little pond I think lake is too big a word about three and a half inches wide and I, I don't know that I need that. And I think my barn, I got my barn too too long here. Let me just double check and see how wide I want to make that barn. Three and a half inches wide. Oh yeah, I needed to stop this way over here, about three and a half inches like that. There we go. Okay, so better. Okay, so now that gives me more room to to have field. Okay. This is sort of how we I sketch in anything. And just see how I'm just kind of making a you know kind of a very rough uh, sketch here and um, make sure I have this measurement that I like this 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 painting involves this a lot of tree and some barn and I'm just sort of evaluating it now I'm looking at that to see if I have enough room for the the entire thing okay I'm moving my barn up and this is this is how I kind of figure out how I'm doing things moving this barn up like that about a quarter of an inch up and then I'll just move the whole thing up a little bit there we go I like that much better now let's see what it does I finally ended up with it two and a half inches down but a wonderful thing about chalk don't get confused you just sort of wipe off what you're doing and that's good so if you followed along and you're erasing with me too don't use a pencil because you can't get rid of it then you're just stuck with whatever those pencil lines were okay this will be like this going this way Here's our little barn. Okay, so that's where we're going to start. Now I want to take a small angle brush and we're going to do the sky. So the best thing to do with that is to know that we're going to be doing tiny little brush strokes and it's going to get lighter as we get down to the roof of the uh, to the roof and the and the scenery down here. We want a little tiny angle brush. This is a this would be a little flat brush, an 8 inch flat brush. You wouldn't want to use that. 
See if I can find a, an angle brush here. Something, something small. I see all kinds of brushes that would be helpful in this painting. This isn't one yet. Here we go. Here's a little angle brush. Here's one. This is a half inch Simmons. We'll move all these out of the way. Now we're going to start by mixing color as we go. We're going to wake up the brush by wetting it and then wiping it off on a rag. Make sure that it's moist. And then I'm going to come up, start at the top. I'm going to mix a little ultramarine blue into this thalo mixture, a little white, a little tiny thalo, a little bit of white, and maybe just a tiny bit of cad red medium, like less than 1%. And I'm going to come up here like this, and I'm going to just tap this color in individual brush strokes on the picture, like this, like almost like little dashes. And you're going, gosh, you can't see a thing. Let's put a little more thalo blue in this. I'm going to come a little bit darker. I want a little bit darker. And so the background is so close to this color that all we're doing is creating really a little bit of a pattern. You don't see much. It's a slightly darker, and I'm just using the corner of the brush, making little small overlapping strokes. What Impressionists had to do, because their paint didn't dry for days and months, is that how they painted things, which is what I like the technique and people respond to it, is that they discovered that they just made little tiny brush strokes kind of very gently just sort of overlapped each other. They could keep painting and not have to worry so much about the drying time. And it made for an interesting pattern. There's a lot of different ways to put in a sky. You don't all have to just paint it back and forth like a great gradation. You say we've, we've got it a little bit darker up here and I want to make sure I'm not getting these too long. I'm going to come up here with a little lighter color now and just a little bit of white on my brush and sort of while it's still light I'm going to mix some of that white in here like this. Just tap break up uh, those kind of big areas like that. It's a little bit lighter here. So I still want it blue. It's not really white because the white is turning light blue in the painting. The more I tap it over it. So just keep coming across and I will try to zoom in for you. Let's go back to the thalo blue and white and a little ultramarine blue because it's darker up at the top. And I might even just skip a little bit and that will allow this to show. Now as I come back down toward the horizon, which is uh, where the sky meets the earth, it's much lighter. So I think I'm going to start down here at the bottom and just start with the white. And kind of show you this way. I'm going to go a little bit lower than where I know my bushes will be. And using just the corner of the brush, just that kind of having it on an angle like this, I'm making these little tiny dots of paint. It's a different, what's, maybe this isn't a way you would normally think of to paint. Try this. This will expand your ability to create different things. Because there's, you get in the habit of just using one brush stroke. And this type of painting is a little counterintuitive to what you may have already thought to do. Okay, now you'll notice that this is, we're saying this is the clouds. Now as I come back over this, I'm sort of stomping this flat, and kind of pushing them in, holding my brush flat, sort of pushing them into the canvas now. I made the little brush strokes. And now I'm just taking the flat of the brush and sort of tapping them out a little bit here. I want it lighter. And we're going to come back up here like this with my light blue color. And here we go. Just keep tapping it in here. I, I don't want it very white because my flowers will not show up then. If I, if I get the sky too light and I put in the white flowers, the, the apple blossoms, then you're not going to see that. This just is not going to show up. But I still want this sort of dotted sky and overlap. I'm constantly overlapping. I'm going very fast with this. So you can watch my brush and turn it over and then keep blending all this in to each other. If I get, if I, I can, it's nice because I can see in the monitor what I've got and if I've got too dark a spot right here I'll tap it out. But I don't want any white spots because I need to save that color for our apple blossoms. So here we go, the light blue is just sort of tapping it up into here. It's this pretty bright sort of summer day, spring day. And I'm just kind of length lengthening my stride here now. I'm not a big, let me just break that up with a little phthalo. Just come in here and break up those uh, 
bigger brush strokes, which I'm not a big fan of. So let's, it, it doesn't matter how you get this effect. This is just how I'm getting it. But what we're trying to go for is a little darker at the top, a little lighter in the middle, and lots of little tiny brush strokes. And then over here, above the uh, the barn, we're going to have it a little bit lighter too. We're going to just keep keep adding the paint. Keep adding it, just like that. And you're going, well, I don't know. Look, there's a little hole here, so I'm going to come back over and work on this hole. Some lighter color. Let's come back over here. Some people have more patience for this kind of artwork than others. You know, you can find artists that will just, they'll just slow this down and do boop, 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 boop. Don't, think, don't overthink this, please. Don't, don't, don't be doing that. Don't be overthinking it. Now, I know I want it a little bit lighter near the barn. And I can come back because it's acrylics and, you know, create some clouds by the barn. I just want to make sure that when I put my apple blossoms in, that they, they stand out in the sky. And already we have an interesting sky over here, don't we? Let's just tap this up, lighten this up over here. Like that, I'll lighten this all up. And again, it depends on the size of your brush you're using. So much of this can depend on that. Um, are you doing lots of little coats of this? Just lots of coats of paint overlapping and overlapping like this. And then let's keep going here with a lighter color. I know it's very light over in this part of the barn, so I'm going to say these are clouds. But again, even though I'm using a little bit bigger brush strokes, it still has to sort of melt into this uh, phthalo and ultramarine blue colored sky. I need all this to be up here so that, again, the cherry blossom, or the, the apple blossoms will show up. So we just continue painting this. There we go. <clears throat> I had a fun weekend. I took my granddaughter and we went and got her hair cut. She has very long hair, so they only took about two inches off. It's almost down to her waist. She was talking to the hairdresser and she was telling her what nice thick hair she had. And honey, that's uh, uh, Cinnamon's daughter, she's 11, she said, she thought I thought she had the hairdresser cracking up. She said I thought that hair was dead brain cells, and it was all the lady could do just not to fall on the floor laughing. And I said no. I said there'd be people with a lot of hair would then be perceived to be very stupid, don't you think? The more hair they had, the dumber they'd look. That people would perceive them to be. It's, you know, we went on to explain to her what it was. And of course, when she thought about it, she realized how silly that was. And anyway, that was a sort of a fun moment, grandmother moment. I had to share that with you. I thought that was very funny. The hairdresser, I didn't think, could contain herself. She thought that was so funny. Nice lady. Okay, so now, here we go. Look at that. See, we've got this. Now, this is too dark up here. You see that? So now I'm looking at that going, okay, we've got to lighten this up. Even though the, the, the there'll be trees up here, I just wouldn't leave it like that. Even though the trees are up here. I want to make sure that I've got this this darker. So now, okay, so this is our kind of our background sky. Let's tap out any of these white spots. I don't have any little bits of white, but you can see where it is lighter here. And I still may put a little bit more white here because I know this is going to be clouds that are coming up. And it's interesting. It's an interesting technique to suggest that there's clouds that are coming up this way over the roof of the barn. Like that, we're going to say that that's whiter. You want some blue in it. You just don't want it all white. And just kind of tap and melt all that in. Okay, so we're going to say this is our lighter sky. All right, so that's pretty good. And then we want some background. We're going to take a little bit of, of ultimate blue and a tiny bit of green with it, yellow. Make it kind of a green color and a little bit of brown. And let's see, I'm making this sort of back green color. Put a little phthalo blue in it. A little tiny bit of white. There we go. Sort of this sort of blue-green color. And I want to come back here like this, and I'm going to just tap over this. I'm going to say that this is our 
background hill color, which is darker here. And I'm just going to make, well, I guess they're bushes, but let's go ahead and say these are some blue bushes, kind of blue-green bushes that are all over in here like this. I'm going to make sure that I've got enough color. I don't want it too dark. Yeah, that got a little dark right there. We'll lighten this up. This is coming all over here like this. Some bushes that are coming near our barn. This is the underpainting for those. All right, but you can see where we are. That's the underpainting for those. Then I'm not even going to rinse the brush. I'm just going to take a little phthalo blue and, and white. And I'm going to go this way, sideways now, changing the brush. Always look to see what else I can do. Sideways and make these funny little brush strokes going sideways. Just like this, using the same brush on an angle like that. Saying there's where my little pond's going to be. I like to do as many things as I can before I have to dry it. And then here is going to be where my building is, and I need that to be gray. So as long as I've got these blue out, I'm going to add some more, uh, a little bit of red, cad red medium, and white. And I'm going to turn this into this sort of light gray color, like that. And then maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue in that to just sort of make this more of a blue gray, like that with our white. I'm going to come in here like this. I'm, that's not light enough for me. Okay, so let me look. Did I, I could have sworn this is like I put white out. Let me just double check and see. Right, there's, let's try some different white. I'm not liking that. I'm going to put out some different white. Rinse the brush. Try this one more time because this is definitely not the right color. Wipe the brush off. And just add some white right to that. Here we go over this dark blue uh, area. And I'm going to say this is our barn. Okay, so it's similar to the sky color. It's got a little bit more of the ultramarine blue and white in it. So I'm going to add a little more ultramarine blue to this. Say, so, and I'm not going to make the, this as wide as that because you're not going to see it anyway. So here's our light color for our barn. I'm using down brush strokes now because this is supposed to look kind of like wood. And again, you're not going to see this much, but you may see a little bit of, let me just wipe the brush off now, a little bit of up and down brush strokes going this way, because we're not going to see any of this. All right, so this is about as much as we can do with blue. All right, we're just saying, what, what can I do with blue? And this is pretty much it. This is all I can do, except maybe, and again, I'm going to have a tree right here. You don't see any of this edge of this building. You're not going to see that. My plan is that you won't see that. So this is not normally how you'd paint that in, but this is how we're going to pause and dry it. All right, we've dried this. Now, our, now we're going to sort of change direction on what we're painting. That's our big plan. Let's just change direction completely. And... I'm going to go for a smaller angle brush. This is a Simply Simmons, a quarter inch. We're going to start putting in uh, some of our background bushes and our the roof on our, our, our old barn. And it's a thatched roof, so I'm going to take a little bit of yellow oxide. I think this is where the purple is going to come in. I think I need purple, so I want to make sure that I put, put some purple out too. Let me see, where did that go? always interesting. I have all these things and then I go to look for them and I don't see them. So here, you're going to see my my little tub of paints. There's purple. Okay. Only so many colors aren't dazzling purple. We're going to add that. Cause, all right. Now, here we go. Let's just let's just start some um, cad red medium. Tiny bit of dazzling purple. Okay. A little bit like that. About a Okay, and a little tiny bit of yellow oxide in that, okay. Now I'm just going to go ahead and paint the roof this kind of red color. That's like my underpainting for my thatched roof is right here like this. So that was cad red medium, a little bit of purple, which is purple is red and blue, and a little bit of yellow oxide, which is yellow and red. So we're going to say that that's the underpainting for this. That could be drying. We're not going to see the other half of the barn here. 
Okay, so there it is. This is a, this is sort of fun. Now let's just take the yellow oxide now and a tiny bit of ultramarine blue. Make this sort of green color. And I'm going to just tap on sort of a yellow green color. I'm going to tap on some bushes next to this barn like this. And I'm going to come across in front of this dried a blue green area and add some gold bushes. Okay, like that. Let me just move this up forward so you can see it. Let's just get in here and I can really see what we're doing. So we're not we're go, we're not going all the way up here, but we're saying there's a bush here like this and using just the corner again. Again, this is just tapping, just tapping in some bushes. I want to see some of the blue. We're saying in the background there's these dark blue trees and then they've got some sort of little bushes that are all growing over here like that. Some of these little gold bushes. We're tapping them on top of this blue. Just tapping it. I, used, I just spent a lot of time using the corner of these angle brushes because my brush isn't, um, I didn't rinse it. Occasionally you'll see little bits of, of orange here like that in that. Now I'm going to add a little bit of white to the yellow oxide. Just take a little tiny bit of white, make a little spot on the plate with some white and yellow oxide. And I want some, I'm going to say the light's kind of, kind of coming from this way. I'm going to just do little tiny brush strokes here, just in a couple of places. Tap on some lighter leaves, maybe in here. Just say that there might be some. Not too much, just over here like that. Maybe this one's going up a little higher. This bush is a little higher than this background tree. Nothing's drying, so as I pull it into this background, you can see that the, you barely see this blue green. Now, let's just take that same yellow oxide color, making brush strokes at an angle this way. Let's go back to that darker color with a little bit of cad red medium in it. And let's come this way with our brush. It's our first layer of bank for our pond. Okay. Now we're not doing too much here. This is just I'm going to say that maybe it happened here. Now let's change direction. Put a little bit of green with that. All right, that color. Just add. And how do we do that? By just adding some blue. Okay, make a little green color by adding blue to yellow oxide. And I'm going to go this way with our brush strokes. Now change direction. Going this way, that way. Saying that there's something happening over here by the barn we've changed direction. Now then I have to come back with the lighter color while this is still wet. Say that there's a green bank right there. You see what I've said? There's a little green bank. I'm going to tap in some yellow oxide. Just barely touch it. If you mix it in it'll all get one color. And this is hard because we're doing such a small painting. If this were bigger it would be a little easier. But we're saying that there's some kind of yellow oxide color right over the top of this. And I think I'm going to do a little yellow oxide and white and lighten this up right up here over the top of this wet bank. But I want the darker color showing underneath. This is all kind of impressionistic painting. We're doing this very small like that. And if I wanted to, I mean, do I want to? I could say that there was a little, you know, if you want to put a few little trunks on a tree, I guess you could. Just add, add suggest that there might, these might be trees. Again, you see so little of this, we're not really going to see very much of this at all. Like that. Okay, so that's our backward bank. And then as I come up toward the barn, I'm going to make some green color and come this way and say that this is all green up toward the barn up in here. Now to make a green, just take a little bit of ultramarine blue and yellow oxide. That makes a pretty decent green. Come up this way by our barn, changing direction here. Say that there's the, the green. Again, you're not going to see much on this barn. You're only going to see, if I drew it in for you, this is where our barn is kind of going to be, okay? You're really not going to see, of course this would have to be straight up and down, but you, we're not going to see that at all. And this has to be straight up and down. I know my picture's a little tilted. So at this point, I would probably just take some more of this yellow oxide and fill in closer. Sometimes it helps to know where everything is before you finalize it. 
Then we're back to the yellow oxide and a little bit of yellow with it now. Tad yellow medium and we're going to say I've got some grass growing this way. Just using the side of the angle brush that way. This is a fun easy painting to do. You should just do little dots of stuff. And I'll put a little white with that on my brush. Go right on top of that and just lighten up that. Okay. And maybe there's some reflection in the water of the trees. So just barely touch it. I might suggest in the water here there was a reflection. Just doing some strokes like this. Remember, your brush strokes are the grammar of any, any piece of art. So there's really not a lot to this because we've said that all these little things in the background are so out of focus. We're just suggesting by little dots of paint what something is. And this is kind of a big gap up in here. Maybe I want a little smaller bush right here. Just using the yellow oxide over this and tap in a little smaller one right there. I don't know if this will show later, but I'm just put, putting that little bush there. So again, this is all in the background. And I want to do something with my water. So I'm going to take some thalo blue and white like this. And I'm going to lighten up my water like this. Because you remember, your water is reflecting the sky with little brush strokes going sideways like this. Water is reflecting the sky. And I think I'm going to bring the water a little bit closer. Let's just let's expand the water. I like the water. Let's expand our pond down like this. A little bit of ultramarine blue here as we get toward the bank. Let's just make our pond a bit bigger. That's easy to do. And, and this is a wonderful, um, this is now some light blue, some wonderful exercise in what the direction of brush strokes do and what it says something is just by whether you made it sideways, uh, you know, up and down, you did dots, whatever you said you did. Back here, we're saying that there's our pond. It's coming up here, kind of behind the, the house. Okay, the barn. Now, I'm going to say that there's on top of this roof, which is not dry yet, let's, let's, what can we do here? I know, let's make a really dark green, which is ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and yellow. Let's make a really dark green and put a really dark green edge right here over this grass. I want a dark green edge right here. Maybe I want some dark green going back there to indicate a bank like that coming around. Then I'll take some phthalo blue, white, and let's see, with a little bit of yellow oxide, make this not so wide there. Okay, so we've got to make that more narrow. See that? Because it's farther away. Just barely see this little bank in between here of this pond. Maybe there's a little ditch running into it. Okay, so now what? Okay, so now at this point, we're going to just take that dark green color we made. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to come this way and I'm going to start putting in patches of dark green as an underpainting. And everything is kind of going to go this way underneath my building. Okay, I want this as an underpainting. I don't want blue anymore. All, everything's going in this direction like grooves in a record. I can do all this before I have to dry anything. So that's ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and yellow. That yellow medium. I'm saying that this is our dark, uh, dark underpainting for our grass particularly over here on the right, it almost could be solid. Even though I'm still making the brush strokes in this direction, this could almost be solid. It's okay. And just you can see me make it. This Here's yellow, ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber. That is a very, very dark, dark green. Okay. Like that. Very dark. It looks almost black in the camera, but it's not. It's just a very, very dark green color. And I want some of this dark green color up under the eaves of my roof here. Like that. A little bit of that. And, and we'll co cover that, but I want that like that. So this is a good way to sort of lay out a painting. I think there's a little dark green here on the edge of this pond in a couple of places. So I might put it, even if it's just going sideways now here. Change direction. Now, next color, phthalo blue, 
and yellow and white. Here's this light green color. Now watch what happens. Now we're going to come up here like this. Halo blue and light green and, and kind of at the same angle come over this dark green like this. Halo blue, white, and um, didn't rinse the brush. I want to come over this dark green. Everything at an angle. Okay, so that dark green is showing under, up underneath. And it just particularly to the left of the barn, I want this color in the underpainting. Just every every few brush strokes, please notice I get more paint. And I keep coming this way with the green, the brush strokes. This is really a wonderful exercise in just brush stroke direction, just using an angle brush and keeping everything kind of going that way. There's everything, there we go. So here's our little brush strokes. Before we have to dry anything, I mean, let's just look at that. Do we have to dry anything? Well, what could we do while this is still wet? That's, you can ask yourself that. Well, one thing I might do, then what the, often the impressionists had to do was work when something was still wet. So could we go over this while it's still wet? Well, first off, we're, we washed our brush, take a little yellow oxide and white, like that. And now I'm going to, just using this angle, I'm going to touch, I'm going to tap now, make, making any brush strokes, I'm tapping the grass like this, tapping it. Just tapping in these little brush strokes over this. Flat of my brush here like this. Tapping everything. And a little have a little bit of a dark area there, but you see all these brush strokes are going this way. Tapping this in. And you have to reload your brush because like a mop you're picking up this green color. So you'll have to reload, but this is what we're doing. We're just Barely, just using the angle of the brush and tapping in some of these lighter colors down in here. And they're blending in with the other colors. Okay, so doing that. Now, let's just try pure yellow oxide. Just tap that in very carefully. A little bit darker. Just making this our grass strokes. Everything's kind of coming this direction. Not quite pointillism, but it's an interesting technique. When you do paintings like this, when you try a different style of painting, what you end up doing is learning some tricks that you may find you employ in another painting. Come down here like this. Keep getting a little more yellow oxide. Little tiny brush strokes coming in front like this. Now I'm going to go something different. Now we're going this way. Changed it. We've changed the brush strokes. Now we're going sideways. Almost like it might be leaves or a pile of grass, mulch, something. But we're going this way. I'm using the side of the brush. And I'm saying that this is going all this way. Now that's interesting to me in that it doesn't all have to be in the same direction, but it's still these little tiny brush strokes. So try this. This is fun. Okay, let's take a little bit of red color and add it to that while we still can. Just put a little bit of this red color in it over the green. And it's all going to sort of mix in because it's still wet. Tap this out. Put a little red color down here. And then I'm going to come back with a little dark green and I want some dark green right in here, a little shadow of stuff. It's going to be near some of my trees and things. I've got a tree that's right here at the edge of this building, and so the shadow for this is coming right across here. My tree's going to start here, so the shadow for this tree is here. So that means the light's coming this way. So, there, we're going to say there's the shadow for this tree. The shadow for that pond. Here's the shadow for this. Here's a little shadow for this. Okay. All right, so that's about as much as we can do here before we have to dry. But that's a good start. That's an excellent start. Let me just zoom back out. And it's all little tiny brush strokes. 
all little tiny, very little tiny brush strokes. That's all we've done. So we're going to dry it and then move on. Okay, so we've dried this. Now it's time to work on our roof a little bit. So same colors. I'm going to come in here and make the little angle brush, and I'm going to make this little thatched roof. And because we did a red underpainting, all these little angles of straw, just a little yellow oxide here. You can see that. It's not very tricky. I'm just using this little quarter-inch angle brush and just tapping in the roof like that. Let's just take a minute and zoom in. There. Now, you can kind of see how I'm doing it. Just holding the points facing away from me. And tapping on. This is fun. Tap, tap, tap. You don't want to cover up all the red. That's why you put it there in the first place. Going right over this edge here of the... Okay, here's our yellow oxide color. Just tapping over the roof like this. Now let's take a little bit of white with that and make it a little lighter. and Put some lighter uh, highlights on our roof like this. Some lighter areas where the, the straw is on the roof like this. And I think I'm going to take a little yellow oxide and a tiny bit of cad red medium, maybe even some yellow. Let's see what I get. I want another color here. Let's see if I can get this. Oh, that's good. I want another little color up in here. The yellow kind of brightened it up a bit. I'm tapping over all of this. Maybe up here like this. Just layering it. That's all we're doing. We're just sort of layering this little... don't even want to see that roof line particularly. I'm not going to see the other side. Like that. You're not going to see that. Now, can I use this color anywhere else? Yeah. I can come along here in our pond and say that here's our grass color growing up here like this. Start adding this on top of that other stuff I just did. Like that. You can say that there's some grass coming up along here in our shadow area. Just down here in the front. Let me just show you. Now, all I have to do is take a little bit of white with this. Just again, you're letting all these layers show through. It's the same color, just add a little bit of white to the on the brush. Okay, just using this angle brush to just tap this color in, kind of overlapping the grass. Okay, like that. And now let's go, let's take some yellow and some light green. Let's make a light green color. And I think we're going to do that with a kind of a this sort of army green here with the ultramarine blue and yellow. And I want some of this light green color in here too. I'm going to tap some of that color in here. This pretty sort of spring green color. Particularly closer in the front. Just tap a bit of that color in. And maybe I'll put some of this this way. Going sideways. Remember it talked about over here? Let's see. How about down in here like this? Let's put some of that color Ooh, that's pretty. Let's say that there's more of this bright green color happening in the front. And sideways over here in this little pile, whatever this is. Okay, so we've got a pile of leaves here. We've got a little bit of green coming up here. Break our shadow up. Now I'm going to take some phthalo blue in yellow and do the same thing. And I'm going to go with white. I'm going to make it even, I'm going to brighten this up even more. Do you see that? See, see that color? Now, let's go right on top of here. This is what we call color surprise. I'm using a small amount of this phthalo blue and white. It's a lot brighter than we would normally want it. We're not going to stick this everywhere, but sort of in this area near our tree, we're going to have some of this brighter green. Don't really see it anywhere else, but right up in here is where we're going to see it. Okay, like that. And then I'll take a little bit more phthalo, darken this green up just a little bit more, same color, darken it up. And say I want a brighter green in here with my shadow, just in a few places. This darker, darker green like that. And a little bit back here. Or barn like that. So we're going over these, some of this 
in here like this with this bright, little bit brighter green. Not much. Might put a bit of this. You, you want to be very careful not to use very much thalo green because it's just, it's too, it's too bright a color. If you do, you've got to put a little brown with it. You can take a little brown and like burnt umber or something, raw umber, burnt umber, and darken it up because if you need to put any greens, like, like back over here, if you wanted to add some greens to our background trees with a few little dots of green in here, you needed to say there was some green coming along here, you'd have to, you'd have to sort of gray that out. Okay, so here's our shadow. Let's see what color do we want behind it. Maybe a little lighter green behind it, like in here, with a little yellow. There we go. Coming back bare like that. Okay, so far so good. A little of this color here. Now, let's work on our barn, and we'll come back to our grass. All right, so this is what we've got so far. Ah, oh, now, this is sort of fun. I've got a couple of trees stuff going on here. I've got, I've got some trees. As long as I'm in this, I've got some trees... Well, let me see. I've got my main tree coming this way, which I haven't drawn in yet, which I know it's a little confusing. So you're going, you're just really at this point going, yeah, but where's the tree? And I guess I should draw it in, but I want to make sure I have my barn and my fence in here. I've got this old fence that's sort of running this way. And then above it is this, this blue color, very light color. It's a th thalo blue almost with a little bit of cad red medium in it and white and it's a gray kind of a silver gray color a little bit of cad red medium if you get it too much it won't look right and you're going to say we're going to lighten up this front of the barn here now i'm going to put out a new color i'm just going to just put out a new color for this we're going to add some burnt sienna and here's why because we want to say that there's some up and down strokes for the now we're not doing these little dotted anymore. We're going to say there's some up and down strokes for the fence. And while you could make this color, I think it's just easier to use it. So we want to say that, like, back along here, that um, back along here, we've got on the barn here, we've got some up and down brush strokes, just with a little burnt sienna like this. So we're going to say that there's... Because this side of the barn is very undetailed. It just there is some the strokes, brush strokes up like this. And I and for instance, one of the things I know for sure is that the let's take a little bit of burnt sienna and white. Okay, maybe a little bit of yellow oxide. I know that I've got some light color. I'm not sure I get this light enough. I've got some real light color up here on my roof. my little tiny little funny little roof here It'll lighten up this a little bit it's got a little bit of green in it there lighten this color up on the roof because this is all sort of I'm going to bring some of this color down now into my fence and the only reason we know this is a fence is because occasionally there's a hard line here like for instance what like like, for instance, I've got a big fence post sticking up over this like this. It comes up over the roof like this. And then I've got a kind of a line like this. There we go. So, really, this is all, almost... You don't see what this is. You just you, you believe it's a barn because we made this fence post. And I guess we could take a little ultramarine blue and do a little bit of... A, outlining on it a couple places and put some using just the angle brush now on its edge I can put some kind of indicate some boards and just say indicate that there's a little shadow under there put this remember keep it really thin I've got another another little fence post that's coming up here behind it so let's just take the the white and burnt sienna keep making these streaks and this is where you put this is so funny this is where you put paint on the brush and then just kind of go away and walk away from it here's some of this on this post like that 
you know, and you're, you see a little bit of the blue behind it, but not much. And then we're going to see all this tree and everything over here. So there's so very little of our fence post that you see that's coming up above our barn like that. And then I've got another fence post right next to it that's going to be right here. And that is going to be ultramarine blue and a little, or rather, burnt, it's going to be burnt sienna and a little bit of purple. And I'm going to say that there's another dark fence post going right here next to this one, kind of coming out of the ground like that. And then we'll put some highlights on that later. So there's a fence post. And let's flatten our brush and do some of these little funny little skinny lines, not too much, to indicate we've got something going on here. All right, so again, this is about, you're going, this is a comp more complicated painting than it looked at first, isn't it? Because, why? Because it's all these tiny little brush strokes that just take a little bit of time to paint. I'm going to put that at an angle, put a little bit of white here. So there's the top of that post. And I want some blue shadow on this side of this, this post so it stands out. So a little darker shadow here. Maybe a little bit of burnt umber, burnt sienna rather. Here, let's make this a little darker next to this post. Then I'll put some white back over it. Just, it's all just lines. I'm telling you, it's just funny little lines and brush strokes. So when you get back from it, you can see what it is. And this is the fun part about painting impressionists. You think it all has to be filled in like a coloring book, and it doesn't. Okay, so we're saying there's that kind of old fence. We've got something going here, and something coming up here. And I'm just going to, oh, take a little bit of this blue. Make a little hunk in the, take a little chunk out of the roof here, like this at an angle. Just pull some of this down now, a little bit of blue-gray color, just over the, over this whole barn, like that. So it's just all in the background. You're not seeing any of the bright blue anymore. Now our next thing, again, we're going to see some of this is to put the tree in, and once the tree goes in, then then it'll all make sense. So let's let's zoom back out. All right, we've got this funny little little fence here, and we'll just come down here with a little bit of brown. Okay, so now I, this is pretty good for such a tiny little picture. We've got quite a bit of of little funny little brush strokes. Now, in order for us to put in our beautiful tree, which is the painting, okay, and the painting, in order for us to get that to happen, this has to really dry. So let's let's pause and dry this. All right, this is dry enough where I can put chalk. Now I know my tree is going to start. See if I can get some light chalk so you can see it. My tree is going to start right here, come up over the edge of this roof and come like this, and then fork out this way, and then it's going to Y like this and come out over this way and then maybe Y one more time here and let's see let's just Y that way and then we will Y something like this all right so we're going to say that this is our this is our big tree it's going to be at least this wide so we're not really going to see this roof even though we put it in you're not going to see this much of the roof of our building it's just going to cut this off which is an interesting interesting thought to do it that way but that's how we're doing it so let's go ahead and take some burnt umber and ultramarine blue and paint in our tree now again we're using just regular brush strokes so we're going to come in here like this and say we've got this blue tree and it's fun it doesn't all have to be the same color we say this is kind of wind this way. We use more ultramarine blue as we come up like this using our, just the angle of our brush. Mist your paint. If you're getting too much, mist your paint if you're getting, if it's dragging. And it's because we want some very thin branches up here like that and mostly ultramarine blue. We could use thalo too. Maybe we'll try a little of that. 
and use just the corner and come on up like that and then make sure you've got these little skinny branches put a little bit of white with this that's a little dark so that there's our branch coming up this way and it's going to curve like this the chalk will come off tomorrow so if you decide to make an executive decision and rule out the chalk and say I want to do something different don't be afraid to do that and I like to turn something upside down kind of pull the little brush strokes toward me so don't be afraid to switch direction on your painting to do that and you could use a liner brush the thing about I like about these these little these little brushes like this is you can just use the tip of the corner I can paint a whole painting with one of these little angles of course we're going to have some beautiful foliage on this that will sort of make sense once we do it and then we can add we can always add a few more branches if we feel like we lost out on a branch or two we, we know where the color is and we can come back and put it back so we need to put some branches coming across we can like that okay something like that so we can put some branches maybe we've got one that came up this came this way maybe I've got one that came up like this I have something sort of graceful I want it a little bit graceful remember trees are fatter at the bottom then I'm going to take a little bit of this dark brown and blue I'm going to add a few little shadows just tap it like this on the barn maybe this is where this is from the tree like that I'm going to cover this up anyway but let's just see I'll just put a little bit right like that all right so there's our tree I don't really like this right here and even though I'm going to cover it up I have to fix this so this is where our trees going like that just kind of leaning over the barn and then I've got another little so I've got this little I'm going to kind of darken it up here now this little post right here got another little post right here I'm going to put it in now okay a little post here and maybe one right here that's my little fence okay and how about one here all right so I'm putting in my fence too as long as I'm saying I just put in the dark blue color from my fence see if I like that I dried everything yeah so there we there we go so we've saying that there's this fence here like that here's our fence okay so now we, now I feel pr much better about this a few little lines here to make this board funny and let's see as long as I'm doing this I'm going to come up here with some brown and just go over this a bit pull back our fence a little bit back this way this boards on this kind of leaning up against the barn or whatever's going on here so because we're again we're not really seeing this part of the barn and we're not going to see this part we're just going to see about this much all right so this is a good place to you know stop and dry everything and then let's just keep going All right, so now I want to start putting the highlights on our tree and I'm looking to see about my sky I need to lighten up my sky before I do that so one of the tricks I can do is just take a little mixing white and again I will bring my little pile of paint out so you can see it just, I need a little mixing white that's done by Liquitex and that should be right in here like this and it's not so where did I put it ah I put it over here great good to have things all in one place and I'm going to put it on a separate plate and I need to lighten up my sky some but I don't want it so light that my flower blossoms my apple blossoms don't show, show up but mixing white is a translucent color I'm going to come over my sky like this and I'm just going to using this little half inch what is this quarter inch brush using these little brush strokes I'm going to melt this in now right now this looks pretty white but I don't want it this white so as I go over it maybe even wipe some of the excess paint off and sort of dab this in like this I can soften this sky up a little bit 
as it gets down toward the horizon. Like that. And just want to soften this up just a bit. It is just too bright here. And acrylics dry darker, so you may think you have a really nice light sky, and then you turn around going, wow, man, what happened here? I had this perfect, and look, look at this now. So you see how I'm lightening it up here. And I'm going to do the same thing behind now. I've got my, my cloud that I want to put behind this barn on our roof here, and I want to just just sort of put all of this out of focus on top of the roof too like that see I can lighten up can lighten up this roof kind of put everything out of focus even take some brush strokes and go down over the roof too just sort of puts all this out of focus like that I don't need it that bright like that particularly under this tree I'm going to say there's our kind of a cloud thing that's coming up here I'm using a little more mixing white now because I want this to be my cloud and the trick is that, it, that we want the white of the, cherry, the apple blossoms to show up. So if you get too carried away with this, if it's too much, then it isn't going to show up. That's the problem. So I want to make sure that I've got this light enough. And that mixing white is very translucent. Another good one would have been zinc white because that's very translucent. Okay, so I feel pretty good about all of this now up in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the... Go ahead and lighten up the, oh, let's put a little of that in the lake, too, in a couple of places. Just come across here like that with a few little light highlights on our lake. As long as I have it. Yeah, there we go. Better. Now, here we go. Some white, titanium white, and a little phthalo blue. And maybe a little ultramarine blue and a little tiny bit of purple. Okay, that's pretty, sort of a purpley blue color. I'm going to lighten up the highlights on the top of my tree, like this. Say it's a little bit, a bit more white with this. It's lighter here and here, where it sort of goes down in the V. Here's our highlight bit right here. And again, I'm sort of softening up this tree like this. Now on this side we're not going to see we really don't see that that much about what happened here because this is all under, we're not going to see this much of the tree trunk because it's all under the bushes but there will be some light here. Let's take a little bit of old burnt sienna in white. I'm going to change directions here now and just do a little bit of light on this tree down here at the base like that. Alright, as long as I've got this light color, where else can I put it? I can come up back here on my post. And here's my light post again. Look that. Oh, I should zoom in so you can see this. If you can, if it's hard for you to tell what I'm doing. Let me zoom in. So I lightened up this post again. Add some kind of some light up and down lines here like it's a fence back here. This is just burnt sienna and white. And let's see, we want the top of this post to be lighter, like here. Let's say that just tapping in down the side of this, I'm just tapping it now, both sides, the, the little fence here, saying there's a post like that. And then let's take a little bit of blue and white, because it's in the shade. So we're going to, of this tree, we're going to take a little bit of blue and white, maybe just um ultramarine blue and white and say here's the highlight on these two posts because they're more in the shade so the shadow is going to be blue all right you see they're in the shade so that it's going to be lighter if it's in the shade okay the shadow has much more it's going to be cooler and then if it's in the you know the sun the shadow will be a warmer color which is like the burnt sienna okay like that there's this okay so those are those two posts and then I want to pull some streaks down on our barn here, like that. Just pull some streaks here like this to just give it some some definition. Because again, this is all going to be bushes. You're not going to be able to see this. And I've got these three little 
Well, you know what we could do? I'll t tell you what. Instead of having this be the fence, let's turn this, okay? You're going, what, 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 what? Let's turn this. Let's take some brown. And let's turn this into another little bush here. Like this. So that here's a little bush coming up here like this. So how are we going to do that? Well, we just did it. So that this is a little a little tree like that. It's easy. It just it went from being a bush to a tree. Then let's get rid of some of this and take some gold next to it. Come down here with some grass. Like that. Come down here with some green. Watch how fast we turn this into a little tree. Okay? So we're saying that's a tree, that's a fence post. Alright, I like that. That's okay. Here's the top of this little fence post right here. It's a little off white, a little bit of blue and white. Okay, let's just lighten this up too. There we go. Alright, so we got some fence posts lit, lit up. And, you know, we haven't put any lines in for our um, wire. But, okay, so there's our background tree. Now, do you see how just by adding the highlights, let's add a, a highlight on this now. There. Okay, so we've got a tree, which then we have to add the highlight on the branches. Like that, just using the angle brush. Isn't that cool? You don't even have to be very good at drawing thin lines. You're just going to let the angle brush do it. Like that. So that's this little tree. Okay, so now we've got some trees that are going to be coming across here like this. So this is going to be a smaller version of this tree. Alright? So, oh, this is fun. It's always fun. It's like doing a puzzle, isn't it? Just like doing a puzzle. Okay, so we're saying this is fence posts. And then... If that's a fence post, let me get a little bit of brown because it doesn't really sh show that much here. So i got to have something next to this. Wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So I need another side of this post. So I'm going to darken up the barn right here so that this post shows up. Okay? If I darken up the barn there, can't leave it that dark, but I can right next to that post. And I'll lighten this up there. Now this post shows up. We've got this crazy post going up, and we've got some sort of cross lines going like this. Okay, something's going that way. Okay, good. Now, ooh, coming along, coming along. Alrighty, now let's pull some more grass color, because we're still in this. Let's get some grass growing in front of these fence posts. Lighten up the a little bit of yellow oxide, maybe some light green color with some white in it. Okay, let's make a light green color and let's just pull some grass in front of these fence posts like this. And let's see, way over on this side we could lighten it up like this. Okay, so we've got some, so we've lightened up the fence. Wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So this is an easy enough thing to do. We know there's a little dark green shadow right here in front of this one. Same thing here. A little bit of a shadow here maybe from a branch. Okay, so there might be some shadows in our grass back here like this. Going right up to our tree like this. Good. Okay, now what? Okay, so maybe we want some light grass coming up or just some sort of little something coming up, little sideways dots of green coming up next to our tree, back up in here. Like this, push this little post back toward the barn, like that, something leaning up against the barn. Kind of complicated, but on the other hand, it makes it very interesting. Let's see, what else have we got? A little bit of yellow oxide and tiny bit of cad red medium. And let's pull some greenery. Let's warm up some of this again. This is all layers. I'm telling you, one thing about st painting stuff like this, it is all layers of stuff. And I want some little bit of this kind of brighter color between these two.
close like this, a little bit of this bright orange color. And even some of this brighter orange color right on this post here, like that. It's just something brighter there. So, all right, time to zoom in. So, you know, you can't leave just spots of color, so then you got to come back in here with some green and break that up so you don't have too big a pink spot of color. But there you go. See, we kind of broke that up. We got some of this color coming off of here. All right. So far, so good. So far, so good. I think this is very nice. Now what? Okay. So, time for the apple blossoms. Alrighty, so now that's going to be totally different brush strokes. Alright, so when we do that, that's totally different. It's just going to rinse the brush. Now, remember, when you have a tree like this, there's branches in front of it, whether it's coming from this or this tree or that, but it's going to have something in front of it. So let's take, we're going to start with some white and yellow oxide and make a very light kind of off white color. It's going to be the base color of our apple blossoms and this is the underneath color I come across here like this with these little tiny brush strokes like this come across the tree like this and I'm going to say that all up in here too there's these just using like little dots now this is all dot stuff this is all dot stuff you gotta have patience this is the kind of painting where it requires huge amounts of patience that this is all going to kind of connect. This is the underpainting for this, like this. And then I want to say that all up in here, like this, there's some little dots where these branches are going to have apple blossoms on here. Maybe it curves over this way. Here it is. A little row of apple blossoms. Keep the dots very small. And remember, this is a tiny painting, so it can't, it's four, you, you, less is more on this. The big, the big hunk is right in here like this, next to our barn. Remember, I told you we weren't going to see much of it, because this tree was going to be very bushy, all right, like that. So you just didn't really see much of the barn. And... We'll see what else we need to do to, to make this work, but that's, now, white paint right on top of this. Okay, see, so white on top, white paint, little dots, and we're going back over it with white now. Little dots of white. I want you to get a sense of how this is going to work when we do the rest of it. So we did the dark underneath first. Then we're coming up with white paint. Every few dots, I'm getting some more white. So it's a sort of like a two-toned apple blossom thing. Here we come up like this, across this branch. I'm going to say that this came up like this. Tap in some little white dots. Here we go. Out this way, little tiny white dots. Just on the top here. To try to keep the if you're wondering where to put them, make the, the darker colors are generally underneath. I'm going to add a little branch here off of here like that. Just saying what happened there. We don't have to do much. <coughs> going to come down in front of our tree like this and say we had something happen over here like this. More white paint. Here's our pretty pretty green tree that's now starting to bloom with apple blossoms. A few little dots. This is why I wasn't worrying so much about the edge of the barn. Now, behind this tree, there's some greenery. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow oxide, phthalo blue, tiny bit of cad red medium, or yellow oxide. I'm going to make this sort of deep green. And I'm going to say that back up in here, Make sure you really mix that well. Back by this tree, I'm going to say up here in the sky, there's some greenery. Let's put a little more yellow with that. Like that, because acrylics dry darker. I'm going to say back up in here next to the roof. 
got some greenery coming up behind this tree. Now this may be something else growing up behind the barn, but it allows for the contrast of the flowers. That's the trick. That allows for some flower contrast. And also I can put a little bit of that greenery in a couple places on my tree, just maybe up here where the branches are, it might be blooming, something like that. But again, these are very small little dots of color, right, kind of in the in the arm of the where the, the tree forks, kind of out this way, a little bit behind here, the roof. Might say that there's some little greenery that's growing like that. Okay, so that's pretty good. So if I like that, which I do, if I like that, and I've got like this, I want this to be a little golder back behind the house. So I'm going to add a little gold in here, like there next to the tree. Put a little gold here. Just brighten up this. This is some of our background colors, but I want it a little bit brighter. Okay, so you can kind of see that. Just This all sort of one color just sort of blends into another. Okay, now what? Well, I'm going to say that there's another little fence. Is it going seriously? Yeah, let's put another little one right here. Like that. Let's put a little one right here by the corner. So there's another little one there. Let's take some light paint now and put it on this side of it. Just going into the white with a dirty brush. Tap the white on there. Okay. Another little tiny fence post. So it's sort of a little busy yard here. Some stuff's going on. Do we? I may have to come back and work on this post. But that's okay. All right. So now we're going to take our time with the rest of this back into the white paint here. Have it dry anything and come over the front of this with some of that green with some of our apple blossoms like that. They're just right in front. So that when you do that, that pushes all that in back and we sort of made a little path of white dots coming in front like this. Okay, now's the time to do the rest of the tree. This is a good place to stop, dry, and finish the tree. Okay, so it's starting to take shape. So our next our next group of, of, and final group of apple blossoms is going to come up here like this, and I want the shape to be curved like this, kind of like a fan, all right? I want you to think of a fan like this, all right? So the chalk will wipe off, so we need that sort of yellow oxide color, and we're going to start as underneath it and put some Put a little tiny bit of green with that, a little bit of yellow oxide, and a tiny bit of green with it. And we're going to come under here like this. We're going to tap in. And let me zoom in so you can see what we're doing. This is sort of key to make this work. Okay, underneath the branches, which are going to be all up in here, the underneath part, we want to tap in this gold color. I'm not sure I pinched my brush off because I've had it in water. But I'm going to come up here, underneath here like this. These are... This is the, the fan shape that I'm telling you about where we're going to put our white dots. It's going to go over this yellow oxide, which is going to be our background kind of shade, shady color, like this. We may have to come in and punch some sky back, which but we know how to do that because we remember what color we did the sky. So I'm going to just tap this up in here like this. This is our sort of base color all under here like this. We're saying that this is our, going to be our across the top. And our apple blossoms are going to go all the way up all over the little branches and up into the ceiling. Now, if you lose all your branches, you know where the paint is, you can put them back. Just, we're just making these little dots here. Same thing as what we made the sky. Little dots. Keep getting paint. Little dots out here like this. Like that. Little dots here. Maybe a few. But mostly we're saying that this is all up here like this. We can come all the way out to the edge of our canvas like that. We're saying this is where our sky is going to be, okay? And this is where our apple blossoms are going to be up in the sky like this. So we, so you just 
I, I don't really have too much in here. I don't really have too much in here. They're all kind of, it's all hanging tight up here. If I need any more, I'll bring them up from this tree. But these edges, this is all hanging up there. Now we're going to take some white while it's still wet because this will be the third coat. They'll be, they'll be white and then this coat. And so we're going to come over this now and start tapping in the, the blossoms like this. A little, use just the corner of your brush. Tap in little clusters, little clusters of, of flowers like this on the tree. And some of these have got to be out in the air all by themselves. But the, the gold's underneath. That's your dark color underneath like that. Then we'll just keep coming back with our paint like this over on this side. Tapping in little clusters of flowers. We Really, I'm still on the same plate of paint. I've been just doing this straight for the last couple hours. I'm just painting this painting and drawing it and then just getting, you know, parts of the video, but I haven't really done anything, added more paint. I'm still on the same little bit of paint that I squirted out. Okay, like this. And again, the Impressionists, that's what they were able to do because nothing dried. They would just very carefully just tap one color on top of another. That was their trick. Let me just zoom out. Zoom in just a hair. Just back it up just a hair. See where we're getting this nice cluster of apple blossoms it's coming in here like this maybe I've got some connecting up this part next to the tree I'm not sure where these are. where they where they fit in did they fit in from the bottom one or are they part of this tree I don't know again I know where my branches are if I got too carried away I can put some branches back every few strokes I'm putting in more paint on the brush just tapping this in, tap, 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 tap. I'll make a tap, and if I don't like it, I'll tap a couple times in the same place, then move on. Tap, 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 tap. Okay, so far so good. Still a little skimpy. I need this thicker. I'm going to bring this down into here like this. I, I need this much thicker than I have it. We need a big hunk of flowers in here. Right up in here. I need this to be much fuller. There we go. Much fuller in here like that. Yeah, beautiful. And uh, this tree is, this tree branch is way too dark to, to do something about that. That's that old acrylics dry darker junk. So we'll fix that. That's okay. I'm just having I just wanted to do some flowers. Just felt like we needed flowers. We needed some flowers in here. Now I'm still in the white. And then I want to dry it because if I want white white to show up, then I will have to dry it. Okay, so something like that, something like this. Remember, we had some flowers here which are dry. Now let me just rinse my brush because it's picking up all kinds of gold paint. And I think I'm going to come in here with a little bit of green. Put a little bit of green. That would probably be phthalo blue, yellow, and cad yellow medium. A little bit of a green under here, just the bottom part of this, a little bit darker. Bottom part of these flowers, some of these will have some green in here. So let's just put some on the bottom here, like this at the base. Didn't see that much over here. Like that, just a little lighter green. Okay, that's good. Same here. If we need anything darker. You need it darker, just add more blue. You guys know that, right? When you need to make a darker green, just add more blue. So if you feel like you need a little darker patch of something, little tiny bits now, don't don't overdo it. Dark green. Now let's just take a minute. I'm gonna do it on some of these right here. Okay, down in here like this. Okay, now I really have to do something about this branch, so we're going to pause and dry. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this branch is I want to lighten it up, so I'm going to take some white and a little dazzling purple with a little yellow in it, and I'm going to just 
need to light I need a highlight on this branch but I need it a little bit lighter like that yellow the reason you put a little yellow in something like purple is because it is the opposite of yellow is the opposite of purple on the color wheel you guys remember that right so if you need to tone back purple you use yellow. If you need to tone back yellow, you use purple. Okay, so this is pretty good. Where's that mixing white? I think I think I could tone. This branch is so dark, I don't like it, but I don't want to paint over it. So I think if I took some mixing white and just painted over it like this, this got it too dark here. I'll take a little bit of ultramarine blue with this and mixing white. Let's try that. There we go. That branch was just too dark and it was disturbing. There we go. Let's just lighten this up a little bit. A little bit of ultramarine blue and mixing white there. Okay. You see, doesn't that look better? It, just, it was just too dark a, a line. Now, I can have something a little bit darker on the, on the underside of this, but I have to be careful. I just didn't want that thick. You can have a little bit darker, but not so much. Then I want to take our titanium white and our background blue, and I can go over the sky color a little bit and just make sure I've got the the same blue. That's the, Our background blue had more thalo in it. I'm going to make sure I'm using thalo and white and just say that here you can always go put your sky down. If you lost too much sky, make sure you've got some blue in this. You can just keep tapping on these little bits of color. This make sure you've dried everything first because otherwise what's going to happen is you'll end up mixing green and all kinds of weird colors places you don't want. But that's alright. So if you get a branch that's too fat, just just take a moment and put a little sky back and then you can go ahead and you know, you know, add some branch if you need to or say that here's something that came down here like this can add a little branch. You can always add a branch here and there like that. You can just put one in. Don't panic if you feel like you've lost something. If you haven't lost anything, you can always put it back. And I feel like there needs to be a little bit of light in here next to this tree. So I'm going to just do that. Just add a little bit of light next to this tree like, like that. Just takes a minute to do these little small things and it helps. Okay, so back to our titanium white now. Let's let's come up here and let's start adding some bits of white paint. I'm going to rinse my brush. And I want to keep adding more apple blossoms. And I think the best way to do that is just just don't want uh, my white to be so dirty. So I'm just going to put out fresh white on a plate. That's not, not near anything else. Here we go. Now all right, so here's the apple blossoms. This is our whitest white coming on top of all these other colors on the highlights, just on the edges here, up here like this on the outside edges, like this. So the shadows are sort of underneath. The same thing over here. Gosh, we needed more flowers over here, and we just didn't get them. I'm going to have to come back. All right, so I'm going to say that there's those. Here, I want to bring some more of these little flowers up here, these little flower apple. There we go. Up into here. This is the second coat of white. A couple of these. We'll bring this up. Same thing here over our roof. You just want to make sure that everything, when you look at it, it translates. And what I mean by that, does it read well? There's a couple little light blossoms, maybe up on the top of this little bit right there. You have to be sparingly with the white. That's why we did all these off-white colors. The white blossoms are just on top and maybe some separate flying ones out there like this. The same thing here. Let's just put some down out here over the lake. A couple little things. Just, you can get away with a lot if you are judicious about where you put stuff. All right. Remember we said there was more white coming up in here like this. I'm going to come across this branch right here too. There we go. Just come, be, be prepared to cross over branches. 
Same thing here. Do we need any little white ones right up in here? Like this. All right. Now, this color here is too close to the roof color. So I'm going to go back into my gold anyway and white. And I'm going to just paint out that in here like this. I'll just paint that roof. I don't want it to be misconstrued as a roof color. Okay, just some sort of background bush, but I don't want it to think it's the roof. And now let's see, what else can I do? Oh yeah, I remember I was going to do more more trees over here. So we need we need to bring in this gold all underneath here like this. Bring some of these apple blossoms down this way. Like that. We start with the underneath color and maybe a little bit of, even a little bit of burnt sienna on top of some of this. Almost as if these all the colors we're just using the same colors over again. A few little burnt sienna colors. I'm gonna pop that over here too. I'm underneath. That looks really cool. Just a little bit of that burnt sienna on the underneath side of these. Like that. Just pop a little of that burnt sienna, and then we'll come back over here like this and say that there's some white flowers. That are coming along. Now, do we? Need, I don't have as much burnt sienna under here, but if I sure do up here, underneath these of apple blossoms up at the top of the tree, there's just sort of this shadowy color of this burnt sienna color too, with the mix with the yellow oxide. Now, white paint. Okay, and I can get away with this because it's. Remember, we did it before. Now we're going to come right on top of this with white. And it won't stay white because this is wet. So now we're going to come up on top of this. We're saying here's our white apple blossoms. And as we push them in, we're actually mixing the color. This is wet on wet color mixing. Just, there you go, something like this. Break these little bits of solid color up that we just did. And then maybe have a few little tiny blossoms going down here like that. All right, so that's, ooh, that's pretty. Now what about here on top of this? tree right in here. Let's take a few little ones and come across here like this. It came down like that. There we go. That looks nice. All right. Um, I feel like we need something right up in here. Maybe some from this tree. Maybe more here. Let's take a little bit of white and actually add some clusters of apple blossoms that might be showing up. Something like that. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. Now, how are we doing? Let me zoom back out so I can see it. Zoom back out. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so this is coming along here like this. And we're going to just say that there's the nice big full branch of blossoms on this tree like this. And if I got too much white, that's okay. I know where the gold paint is. Come right back underneath it, tap in some gold, right underneath it in a couple places, like that, so that the light is on the outside of those oh, flowers. Lights on the outside of those flowers. So a little more gold here. Just tap that in here like this. Acrylics dry darker. All right, so how, how are we doing? Oh, that's pretty. I think we need something this way. So let's see. Let's add another little group of flowers coming out like this. There, so that shows up. That's nice. And then maybe over here, let's thicken this up. Let's say there's something that can't, happened over here. All right, and what about here? Would there be any just suggesting something happened here like this by our creek and let's see we've got these branches here now we'll just come here in a couple places and say that there's some individual apple blossoms coming down like this and there we go. Just a couple places like that. Oh, I like that. You could, we could we could get too much. 
All right, let's just come up on this side of the roof here. Make sure that we have some flowers. Nice big white ones, and we're going to say there's a nice big area here in front of this tree, too. That's very white. So I'm putting a little bit more close together some clusters of flowers. I'm kind of looking at the monitor, seeing where else I need to sort of fill in something like that. All right, I mean, I'm kind of like, like, liking that a lot. I think I want to bring these up into the sky a bit more, like that. The same thing here, like this. Bring up a few little branches coming this way from this tree. This bottom one, like that. Just bring it up. I don't know. This reminds me of spring. Little apple blossoms. Cherry blossoms, I think, are pink. But I think the the white ones are apple blossoms. And I think it can be very pretty. There we go. Just something like that. Now I like the contrast between the warm and the cool of the of the thatch roof and the rest of it. This is very fun. And we've got the nice warm, bright, brighter greens in the front. I'm going to do a little bit of something to the fence post, I think. Maybe make it I'll take a little phthalo blue and white and just lighten this up a bit. Just a little bit here. Just brighten this color up a little bit here. And the same thing on this post right here. Like that little phthalo blue and white. And let's see. A little bit lighter on this edge of this the, the the highlight edge of this post needs to be lighter. So I'll have to dry that. So I think that's our painting. I think that that came out. This is sort of an impressionist a nice impressionist style painting. I will go ahead when I shoot the introduction, if I come back and I paint anything else, I'm going to go ahead and um, if I do anything else, I'll, sh I'll show you what I did in the introduction if I come back and, and do anything. I, I like our clouds around, you know, behind our, 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 our barn. I still think we need to do something with this post here. And I'm going to break this this barn, because our barn sort of this blue, silvery blue-gray color, which is sort of fun. And in the front, there's it's more of a turquoise. So if I put a little dry brush, a little turquoise over some of this, like that, it feels a little more barn-like. The same thing here, this dry brush something here on this part of the barn. And again, like I say, we don't really see where the barn ends. We just know there's a building. And I have to make, make sure that we've got some green here. So I'm going to just pull some green this way. So that our barn ends where it needs to end. Okay, like that. So that you can see this is the edge of it, but it's not the complete, the complete the complete barn and then we'll put a few little flower flowering stuff like that okay awesome all right so we're going to call this our, our our apple blossom painting and again in the directions at the very beginning I will I probably am going to go back and add some some just some highlights on some of these backboards but I'm pretty happy with how we've got this and I'd say this was a fun painting to do. Let me move everything out of the way. I hope you enjoyed it. Well, just all the different ways that you can paint with impressionistic paintings. You know, there's a lot of different styles, a lot of different ways you can paint something. We could have had a lot. If this was bigger, we might have even done some crazier stuff. Do not forget that you can come and take and poke some holes in your sky. Now, look, when you if you get too many, too many apple blossoms or too much of any one thing, Put your sky back in a couple places. Just tap in the sky. If you remember how you did your sky color, you can put the you can put it back. So don't panic if you kind of overdid it somewhere. You know where the sky is. Put it back. That's all I'm going to tell you. Just put the sky back if you need to. And this is uh, our apple apple blossom trees on the river. And I think it's very fun. And I hope you had fun doing it.